وقائم غني واحد وقائم meaning القيام بالنفس القيام بالنفس is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-subsistent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not reliant upon anything else if he relied on anything then that would entail similarity to that creation uh, to creation in itself similarity to creation and that would entail that he has a cause and then we would go back to the continuous regression which is impossible وقائم غني وواحد غني هي also is further explanation of the attribute of قائم من غني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cannot be described with al-faqr meaning neediness he's ghani ghani meaning what that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent how has he translated that word absolutely independent absolutely independent so has he numbered the attributes no no so ghani meaning absolutely independent this is why to state that Muslims who go to graves and address people who reside inside of graves are mushrikeen polytheists before declaring such Muslims as polytheists a person would have to determine what is their belief regarding those people in the graves meaning it's not an issue of as easy as someone who goes to a grave and addresses a man in the grave or from far he addresses someone who has passed away you declare him a mushrik, a polytheist, a kafir because outwardly a person may make a simulation of idol worshippers and this individual when a person further examines that individual they will realize the individual does not believe that the one he is calling upon has the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this issue of declaring Muslims as polytheists due to uh, ignorance of their actions, meaning some of them may do things out of ignorance, but declaring them polytheists and saying they have done a shirkul akbar like idol worshippers is something that Muslims should be wary of. This is uh, similar to what Al Imam Ahmad al Shatti said when the work of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab was sent to him, Kitab al uh, he mentioned that there was an old woman in Damascus who went to one of the graves of the pious people or one of the graves of one of the prophets, السلام, and she was addressing the prophet from the grave. <laughs> Uh, the Prophet who was uh, residing in the grave, Al Imam Ahmad al Shatti went to her and taught a basic Tawheed and the divine attributes. Meaning, he did not declare the old woman a mushrika, a kafira, a polytheist. This is something that uh, has become uh, rampant today in parts of the Muslim world. And some of the actions of ISIS in destroying shrines and uh, killing and beheading different groups of people because they disagree with them on certain things. Common people is a, is a produce of those teachings of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. So here the attribute of ghaniyun wa wahidun, meaning Allah subhanahu wa taala is one, one in his that, in his essence, and one in his attributes. What does it mean for to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one in his attributes? Every attribute is one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having the attribute of al-qudrah, divine power is one attribute. You cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two attributes of al-qudrah. You cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two attributes of al-irada. Every attribute is one. Wahay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is living. Now the word hay, this should make us think that sometimes in the Quran, one word is used, 
is stated regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when that same word is applied upon creation the entailed meaning is different the import of the word is different if I say Zayd is Hay Zayd is living that would mean the heart of Zayd is beating and Zayd is alive but when I use the same word employ the same word for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hay it does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a heart that beats so when you read a word in Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem that if the same word is employed or applied upon creation the word would entail one thing when the same word is spoken for for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the meaning is transcendent like if I say the word Yad, Yadullah which literally translates as hand of Allah when I apply the word Yad for Zayd it means an appendage or a, an arm, yes, a limb which has uh, proportions, which is contained in space and time, which has nerves. But the same word used in the Quran or in the Ahadith does not mean limbs or anything which is contained in time or space. The meaning is transcendent. And this is the correct belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. What makes a distinction between the modern pseudo Salafi movement and Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the pseudo Salafi movement, when they express these same words, when they read the verses of the Quran or the Ahadith, they say, they say that this does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a resemblance to creation. They affirm this. But then they say, we cannot negate the fact that this is a limb because the Quran states it is a limb. So they affirm some similarity. When the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah negate any similarity, they say you have taken the position of Mu'tazila or the position of the Mu'attila. These were people who denied the attributes. So they say that you are denying the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the correct position is that the Sunni Muslims affirm these, uh, these attributes, but they say the meaning is transcendent, that we cannot comprehend the meaning with all of them. Even the attributes that we comprehend, we do not completely comprehend everything regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, <clears throat> when we say hay, living, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is living, but the meaning of living transcends the meaning that we understand from when a human being is living with the heart beating and the blood flowing. Qadirun muridun alimun bi kulli shay. Qadirun, having power, divine power. Divine power over everything entails those things which are possible which fall in the realm of possibility we cannot say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over those things which are wajib because the very meaning of wajib is that thing is essential is necessary so by saying someone has power over that which is essential that would that would mean that th that thing no longer remains essential so you do we do not say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over himself you do not say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over himself what we do say is the meaning of inna allah ala kulli shayin qadir surely allah has power over everything means everything which is which everything which is possible Mumkin. So the absurd objection, these, this is now an example of how atheists may so doubt in people, but when you study rational theology, you will know the response. Uh, the objection they present, which is, can God Almighty create a boulder so huge that he himself cannot pick up that boulder? Now, Muslims and Theists, anyone who believes in a God, when they hear this for the first time, 
they may feel bamboozled, confused how to respond to this objection. But the, the response is very simple, that the person is in effect asking, can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make himself powerless? The response is no, because the divine power only relates to those things which are possible. So the objection that can God Almighty create another God, or can he come down in the form of a man? The response would be that these things fall under the rubric of impossibilities. And the divine power does not relate to impossibilities. Muridun willing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a divine will and he is willing. Meaning will is that when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed this thing to be as such, then it is with his will that it has those attributes, that thing which is created. If someone negates will, divine will from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that would mean that that thing has come into existence of its own volition, of its own doing. And that would mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have power over that thing. So it is essential, rationally essential for us to establish with our minds the attribute of al-irada, meaning this is an essential attribute for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qadirun muridun alimun bi kulli shay. Note he says alimun bi kulli shay. The qudra, divine power relates only to possibilities. The will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only relates to possibilities. The will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only relates to possibilities. But the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates to possibilities, impossibilities, and is necessary things, everything. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything which is necessary, everything which is possible, and everything which is impossible. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also an attribute which is kashifa. It uncovers those things which are unknown. So, a common question people ask, Allah knew I will do this. They intend by saying that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that they will do a specific action, they say this entails that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has coerced them to do such an action. Is this correct? The answer is this is incorrect. The attribute of Allah knowing you will do something does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced you to do that thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing you will do something does not mean he forced you to do that thing. So what does it mean when we say Allah willed this thing to occur, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything relating to that thing, including free will. So Allah, the will of Allah was Zayd killed Bakr. What does that mean? Does it negate free will from Zayd? The answer is no. It means Allah created everything, including his free will. So Zayd killed Bakr with his own free will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the free will of Zayd. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created within Bakr death. When Zayd stabbed Bakr, if Allah had willed, he could have stabbed him and Zayd, Bakr lived. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed his soul. But Zayd will still be responsible for carrying out within his limited free will that action. So any hisab accountability that comes about is due to us acquiring an action within our limited free will. So hisab is only that which we do with our, our own free will. This free will is also created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understanding that is understanding the subtlety between those who say humans create their own actions, like the Mu'tazila, they said humans create their own actions. And those who say, the sect known as Jabariyyah, who say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything, we have no free will. There was a sect 
known as Jabariya, they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything, we have no free will. So when we drink, if a person drinks alcohol, Allah has made him drink alcohol. And there was another sect that said the human is responsible, he creates his own actions. So they ascribed creating to humans. But Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything, including our free will. So we have free will, but even the free will is created.